Good morning. It is Monday, March 13th, 23, and I am Carrie Freeman, the writer, producer, director of My Left Ear, as I always like to say. Uh, this is a left-leaning political and psychic commentary YouTube channel. So I do a lot of things. I, I focus a lot on politics, but sometimes philosophy and well-being, uh, because I'm also a coach and a hypnotherapist, and I do psychic coaching also. And um, often I add the runes to the readings, and the runes are a divinical way of looking uh, and answering questions. All right, here we go. When I am not here, I call myself a change agent. I do private sessions. I do private sessions for clinical hypnotherapy, uh, human growth, uh, creativity, and I do psychic coaching also. And I'm an author and uh, I'm working on one book and uh, that's a re that'll be a re-release. It's called What is Good Evidence? I also have a Patreon channel. Please take a look. I do fun informational stuff, a little more personal, not politics. Um, and it is patreon.com slash Carrie Freeman. Uh, and as you know, the people who watch regularly, I now have this word disseminate. What I do is I look at all the news and the pundits and I read, and then I disseminate what I think might be interesting for you. I can't cover it all because I only do about once or twice a week. And lastly, this is for entertainment purposes only. Subscribe and like because it helps me tremendously. All right, I wanna start off with something positive. Uh, Joe Biden's approval rating is the highest right now in a year and a half. Isn't that great? All right, I just wanted to start off with something positive. Now, just to kind of make things clear, because I know you all read and I know you know a lot, um, there are four big cases against Donald Trump right now. So we've got the New York District Attorney Alvin Bragg about the hush money for Stormy Daniels uh, and campaign finance issues. We've got uh, the hidden White House documents at Mar-a-Lago, obstruction, probably more. And we have um, Georgia uh, with Fonnie Willis. And you know, I think I might have missed something here. The four major ones, just hold on one second because I think I missed the Mar-a-Lago, Georgia. Well, if I did miss, I apologize because I'm gonna mention E. Jean Carroll, but E. Jean Carroll is a private defamation suit. I'm gonna go back and check. Usually uh, my research is really good and I get this down and I, I think I blew something here. Uh, so, so bear with me. Um, now, I did a lot of runes today. So um, the first runes that I did were about the uh, Alvin Bragg and um, the New York, uh, the New York, uh, case against um, campaign finance and Stormy Daniels and the hush hush money. And of course that Michael Cohn, who's rehabilitated, um, served prison time, but Donald Trump hasn't. And he did all that for Donald Trump. Um, so what I got here was a uh, flow, the rune of flow, where there's an opening. Um, unseen powers are active that nourish, shape, and connect. Um, this rune has a happy ending. Just flow has a happy ending. Um, and it does indicate that, that, that uh, he, this will be the first one. Um, then we got warrior reversed, which says be cautious of hasty or ill-timed decisions. And then lastly, we got opening. So there might have been a, mi a middle section where Alvin got a little nervous or concerned, um, step back, taking his time, evaluating. But in the end, the opening it is about renewing um, clarity, dispelling darkness in some area, and the message is you are free to receive gifts. So this is gonna go very well for Adam, Adam 
Alvin Bragg, Alvin Bragg. Uh, I wanted to say Adam, I wanted to say Alan, Alvin Bragg. Um, this is gonna go very well for him. And I would say, uh, yes, uh, this is gonna be the first one to drop. Although I thought it would be Georgia. But here comes Alvin Bragg, like up the left, getting a length ahead, you know. Um, so what it is is Trump took campaign funds and use them to pay Stormy Daniels and had Michael Cohen do all of that. And now Michael Cohen, um, who really has resurrected himself, in my opinion, is a character, um, but he has resurrected himself. Uh, he's going to be instrumental here. He's going to, you know, tell his story. And he's been had like over 20 meetings with Alvin Bragg. So, uh, They invited Donald Trump to appear on his own in front of the grand jury this week, and Trump is not going to do that. And that is normal, by the way. When you're a, when anybody is about to indict, um, they give them the option: Would you like to come and speak to the grand jury on your own accord? That's and then that signals: Oh, the indictment's going to fall. The indictment's going to fall. So yes, it's going to fall. Um, so when the indictment is filed in New York, Alvin Bragg, Donald Trump will be arrested and then following um, will be a statistical nightmare. And those aren't my words. Those are someone else's words. Um, because obviously, he will be the first president in U.S. history to be indicted, and it will set off a hailstorm, but we don't know what that's going to look like yet. So that's where there's this fear, hesitancy, judicial carefulness. Um, all right. Then I, then I threw another runes question, did quite a fit today. Uh, will in, will indictments reduce Donald Trump's support base? So what I got here, what I got, I got the rune of possessions in the reverse position. And it suggests that there may be considerable frustrations in the beginning, part of the hailstorm, part of the people that are just believe in him, uh, from the trivial to the severe, but there will be resistance with the G GOP first. But then I got possessions upright, two in a row, but the second one upright. Um, and this is the awakening part. Fulfillment, ambition satisfied, and it involves a deep probing, get this, deep probing of the meaning of profit and gain in one's life. Isn't that interesting? And then the last rune is kind of like the answer. It's the rune of opening. Uh, so it's about renewed clarity, dispelling the darkness that has been shrouding some issue, which are these payments that Michael uh, spent in prison, but Trump has not, just walked away. Um, and has been shrouding some aspect of your life. So at the beginning, there's gonna be a lot of uproar about Trump being held accountable. And then it's not gonna be 100% of course, because there's always gonna be these Trump fanatics. But uh, yes, there will be a shift and people will start getting shocked by so many judgments and um, court situations. So there will be a reduction in support, but not right away. All right, that's what I wanted you to know. Now we're gonna move on to the Fox News and Dominion suit. Um, they slander Dominion with lies and they undermine Dominion and uh, hurt Dominion's ability to uh, be viable and working and legitimate. Uh, so, there is, um, 
I, you know what I found out? I want to share this with you. Rupert Murdoch only holds 39% of this company. I don't know about you, but I thought, you know, like he had larger holdings, but you only ever hear his name or his son's name, Lachlan. Um, and then Paul Ryan, you know, is on the board of Fox News. And he could have left, but he didn't. He just stayed collecting his money. Um, right now, there are, um, there are eight law firms repping shareholders and their complaints in regard to recouping their losses because Fox had a, a drop. So I asked, will there be shareholder lawsuits? And I got opening, <laughs> renewed clarity, opening is the room, renewed clarity, dispelling some darkness that has shredded a part of your life. I got constraints. Represents obstacles that we create for ourselves. Well, they invested, so they created this for themselves. Um, and it's about identifying the shadow side where growth or even a dis or even a belief has been stunted um talks the constraint talks of uh troubles denials setbacks those are indicated but the final rune once again we get like that ending with the final rune disruption and i know probably so many of you watch tarot a lot because there's so much tarot on the internet that it's not dissimilar from disruption in tarot so but but the runes will try to spin positive and so it says change freedom liberation and breaking free from a constricting identification and fox uh phony fox is definitely a constricting identification so from reading this i say yeah there's they're definitely going to be shareholder lawsuits against fox um and then after watching a lot of pundits really smart attorneys that when tucker carlson uh released the january 6th footage that kevin horrible mccarthy gave him exclusively um it is called abusive and outrageous but not necessarily criminal okay so i just wanted to let you know that um then i went on with the runes it's kind of a big runes day will dominion settle with fox now personally my left ear doesn't want them to settle I want them to go to trial so things can be like even more um, evident and uh, uh, revealed. However, the runes are saying um, that the first rune is defense, okay? And so this is the test. This is the fight. And there might even be a delay uh, and it might prove beneficial, okay? And it says, don't press. So the delay, I imagine with this kind of negotiation, mediation is remarkably long because there is so much money involved and so much at stake. But at the end of the day, Fox will not want to go to trial. So they're going to try to make this happen. All right, then I got Gateway. And Gateway is a little mysterious. It talks about deep, deep transformational forces are at work. There is much work to be done, and that means there need clarity in such a negotiation. Um, and contemplation is very important. So I'm thinking we will get no fast answers about this uh, settlement if it happens the way I'm suggesting it will. Um, and then breakthrough. I got the rune of breakthrough on this will dominion settle. Um, and it's, it signals a major shift in the process of self change. And to quote the runes, it says, in each life there comes at least one moment, which if recognized, transforms the course of that life forever. Um, this is gonna be good for Dominion. Dominion's gonna win bigly 
the Fox just doesn't have a chance. The the uh, evidence, the text, it's really overwhelming. And then I went further because Fox is big in the news right now. Will Fox's license be in jeopardy? Um, my left ear thinks they're going to be in historic jeopardy, uh, and that there will be there is evidence of malice. So that's my take before I pulled the runes. But I got I pulled two and then I stopped because it was so positive. It was so evident to me. I got the reverse of possessions. And it says, you are compelled to stand by and watch helplessly while what you've gained dwindles, okay? Dwindles. And then I pulled disruption, all right? So there's your answer there. The license will be in jeopardy. Now that kind of thing could take a long time, but we're gonna see massive chaos. I mean, this thing with Fox has has little legs, you know, centipede legs that are going off in all negative directions for Fox. Now, I don't watch Fox, except I, I, I catch a clip here and there on um, Twitter because I'm so disgusted by the people, but um, they're not mentioning Dominion. They're not mentioning the trouble they're in at all. In fact, uh, Tucker really doesn't know what to do because he's only done this one thing, which is, which is lie and make up stories and create fear. So he's kind of just doing the same thing. Uh, Tucker Carlson. Now, I've <clears throat> been watching for a while the E. Jean Carroll case, um, civil rape and defamation, sexual assault, all of which from watching... Um, the lawyer Popak on Midas Touch. He's really great. Um, and this was way back in 1995-96. So clearly, Trump does not want Judge Lewis Kaplan, New York federal judge, uh, to do this. But this judge is allowing the Access Hollywood grab them by the pussy video, video it's not the video, they're gonna hear the, the actual uh, audio, um, gonna allow it to be an evidence of 45's pattern of sexual entitlement. Uh, but he didn't do this without really, you know, just automatically, Judge Kaplan went in and read, he read it privately, he looked at the tape, and then he came back and ruled. But this is really cool. The judge himself um, read verbatim Trump's dialogue from that Access Hollywood video. And it's really grotesque how he talks about women. How if you're famous, you can do anything you want. You can grab them. You can kiss them. And it happens to me all the time. I do it all the time. Um, and so that was pretty shocking. Uh, now, this case will not put him in prison, but it's it sets a precedent uh, probably for more women to come forward should, should they choose because there's so many that he has assaulted. Um, but this, this case for E. Jean could be a huge financial hit uh, for Donald Trump, if not necessarily criminal. It's still really bad. And he has what is a, considered a pretty good lawyer named uh, Joe Tracapina, if I pronounced it correctly. He's very experienced. However, um, but when I pulled one rune on this, okay, I didn't just depend on my left ear and I got harvest, harvest, which is one year, okay? And it makes sense because he's gonna appeal and all this kind of stuff. So, but E. Jean is winning. She will win. It's a done deal. I feel confident. You can sue me if I'm not right. But one year, because that's what the harvest rune indicates. Um, so Mike Pence, you know, he's fighting this subpoena to go in and speak 
to the grand jury under Jack Smith, which is nuts. Uh, but Jack Smith, before Mike Pence even officially refused, he went in and he made a preemptive motion, preemptive uh, for Mike Pence to testify. Pretty smart of him. Uh, and he did this in, in advance of Pence publicly refusing. Uh, Glenn Kirshner likened it to an umpire striking a player who is still in the dugout. <laughs> And even I understand that. Uh, now, what's interesting is in the last few days, uh, Pence is walking, doing speeches. He's sort of prepping this, what he thinks is gonna be a pre presidential run, which is a terrible mistake on his part. But he just made a hard line speech about Trump for the first time. But it's the kind of thing he should say to a grand jury. So I don't know what this guy is doing. I don't think Pence is very smart. I think he's uh, kind of methodical, but this is not, this is no genius, this guy. Uh, you know, a lot of people, you probably are aware that there was, about a year ago, there was a lot of publicity that came out that George Clooney's production company, Smokehouse Productions, was preparing a documentary about Jim Jordan's involvement in the Ohio State wrestling sexual scandal. That's a mouthful to say, because he was very present and uh, people are alleging that he saw this abuse and said nothing, did nothing. Um, and I'm gonna throw runes on it, but I decided not to do it today that, that, that uh, I was really working the runes today. So I am gonna come back to this because it's very mysterious. I actually sent a note to Smokehouse Productions, didn't hear anything back. What my left ear uh, senses is that they're faced with some kind of um, legal things going on about such a documentary to be continued. And then, um, you know, just to note about GOP representative Scott Perry, who had his cell phone seized a year ago, and he's suing and he's fighting to have it returned, um, that it indicates, because judges, the judge got to look at it, that um, he tried to prevent the Department of Justice from reviewing his communications. Um, there are emails, texts, messages, and media attachments. Um, and Judge Beryl A. Howell ordered Perry to turn over 2005 of those texts. Uh, Perry contends the FBI has no right to that information, uh, citing that thing that everybody's citing, the debate clause, the speech and debate clause in the Constitution. They're all pulling that out of their um, you-know-whats. Uh, so I think in the long run, those texts uh, that'll be incriminating for Scott Perry will be released. And there is um, a large contingent of people that think that Scott Perry is going to end up going to prison. Um, and once this happens with Scott Perry, by the way, it's going to open the door to investigating more GOP representatives and senators in terms of the insurrectionists involved in January 6th. So that was quite a mouthful for today. I actually put notes to add to the next uh, presentation because I didn't, I thought it would just be overkill if I tried to fit everything in. Um, I have a little bit of good evidence when I sat here and went, what, what can I share? It's like, oh, okay. The other day I was driving on the, um, just the, just the streets, not the freeway. And something dropped, this has happened to everybody, by the way, something dropped on the floor. I'm at a stoplight. So I reached over to get the thing, but my car, my car rolled into the back of someone else. And you know, and you know what you say when that happens. Oh my God, you feel the bump. 
So da 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 da, and I'm looking, and it's a female, and I'm just about to get out, but she gets out of her car, and I stand up, and she comes over and looks at her bumper, and she it was young young woman, and she goes, "It's okay, there's nothing there. Don't worry about it." And she drove off, <laughs> and I thought, "Wow, that was a pretty lucky moment," and it was also, Carrie, pay attention right? Pay attention. So that was, that was a good moment. That was some good evidence. I got saved from some major aggravation. Um, here's a couple of quotes by Ern. Well, this is one, this is by Ernest Hemingway. And honestly, I could do a whole podcast on just the subject of listening. So this resonated with me. And I have a book that I love called listening. So I may do a podcast on listening. But he said, very simply, I like to listen. I have learned a great deal from listening carefully. Most people never listen. And I have to say, I agree with her, Ernest Hemingway. Most people don't listen. I've just sat back and observed it myself. Just can't even believe it sometimes. But anyway, Ernest Hemingway. Uh, then here's a quote from Drake, hip hop super artist, Drake. He said, never let success get to your head and never let failure get to your heart. I thought that was a really nice quote by Drake. Thank you, Drake. And I just want to say one quick thing about the Academy Awards. I watched much of them. Uh, I wasn't that compelled, but I had seen three of the pictures and um, I had seen Brendan Fraser and I'd seen the Irish movie with Colin Farrell and uh, Brendan, um, Brendan Fraser, no, not Brendan Fraser. You see, there's two Brendans. There's Brendan Fraser from The Whale and there's Irish Brendan. I'm, okay, escaping me happens sometimes. Um, and Austin Butler. and. I had a private feeling about maybe who I wanted to win. And usually what I do when I watch the Oscars or these shows, I play with my own intuition. So usually I'm watching them alone because I really don't like to watch with other people because there's so much talking and cross-talking. But I'll sit there and right when they get up to, and the um, nominees are, and then they go, and the winner is, I pick in that moment. I pick in the moment when they say the winner is. I just like try to download it. And I've had remarkable success just downloading that moment. But I didn't know if I wanted to do it this year. However, about four days ago, I got out of bed. And as it happens with my left ear, it just came through. It just came through my left ear. Brendan Fraser is going to win Best Actor. Now, I really like Brendan Fraser. I actually did a couple of movies at Universal and was in charge of them. And he was the nicest man. And I'm sure he still is. So really happy for him. And he did do a great job in what I thought was a very mediocre movie with some mediocre soap opera writing. All right, I can be, I can be totally in the minority. I'm just sharing you with you. So he wasn't my first, but Colin Farrell, um, the Banshees of, it's hard to say that word, Isherim, Isherim. I think I'm not even saying it because they made up that island. It's not a real place. Um, that movie haunted me. I, I'm still thinking about the movie. It had a big effect on me. And I really loved Colin Farrell's performance. I think he's so um, kind of beautiful and handsome. I think people don't realize what a gifted actor he is, what a what a uh, versatile actor he is. So I'm a big fan of his. But then I saw I saw Elvis and I had never been like this giant Elvis fan. I was more like with my eyes on the Beatles a long time ago. Um, so I wasn't that Elvis fanatic. I actually knew one. I knew one who was an Elvis fanatic. But what what struck me about Elvis and Austin Butler was First of all, what he had to go through to win that, um, to get 
cast as Elvis. And it was months and months and months of sending videotape of himself to the director and auditioning and auditioning and this and this. I mean, it was almost like torture, him trying to get this part, which of course he did. And then the transformation um, that this young man made was to me remarkable. So I was kind of leaning towards Austin. Uh, I can only imagine how happy Brendan Fraser was last night. I mean, cause he, he, he kind of disappeared and I just know him to be this very kind, regular, down to earth man. So I'm very happy for him, don't misunderstand me. Um, so anyway, I, I just didn't do it last night. I just uh, stopped, you know, guessing. I just watched it. Uh, one thing that I did notice is that when, um, Jamie Lee Curtis won for Best Actress. Uh, the um, now now I'm losing her because I see I didn't write it in the notes and so um, it was the woman who played Tina Turner and you know this happens this happens words I've even been known to forget a friend's name sometimes but she looked annoyed I mean she didn't try to hide it she just like ugh. She didn't roll her eyes, but she looked really annoyed. Um, and, and Carrie Condon from the Irish movie, um, whom I loved in this movie, she was up for best actress. She just kind of looked like, really? <laughs> it was funny. Anyway, that's all about that. I'm gonna be back in um, two days with a new Patreon and continue with uh, talking about what is good evidence. We're gonna get into grokking. Uh, tomorrow I have to do a deposition for a lawsuit, so I won't be around. That's why we're, Patreon will probably be Monday. So make peace, make good memories. I'll see you soon. There's going to be a lot to be talking about in the next two weeks. I just feel it. So bye-bye. See ya.